Okay, we are on women's jewelry. And today the Duff, 59, page 59, in, um, in Masacha Shabbat was about jewelry and a lot of it, actually. I mean, it incidentally only touched on it, but it was fascinating. One of the important elements that came out of today's Duff in terms of historian was um, the tiara. And that was called, if you recall, right, the Ir Shel Zahav. And the Ir Shel Zahav, or Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, was basically a tiara. Now, it, it came out in halakhically, uh, can you wear it on Shabbat? Can you not wear it on Shabbat? Do prominent women, what do prominent women do? What is their MO? Do they take off these things and show it to their friend? And, you know, lavish in the attention that they're getting from this beautiful piece of jewelry. And it's associated with Rabbi Akiva because there's a famous midrash where he tells his wife, Rachel, that uh, um, even though I am a pauper right now and very much a pauper and I don't know much Torah right now and very much I don't know Torah, soon that's all going to change. And when I do make that change and I do find the means in which to, to, to get out of this and to be much improved, I'm going to reward you for your devotion and love for me with a, a tiara. Now, the interesting thing is the tiaras, there seem to be two types, one with gold, one with more uh, cloth, but it doesn't matter for us. What's interesting is, did women wear tiaras and what did they look like? Meaning to say, did wealthy women uh, wear tiaras or did they wear something on their head? other than very fancy hairstyles. So when you would look these things up, what do Roman patrician women wear, for instance? You find gorgeous hairstyles with all kinds of braids and things coming out. And, and, and we actually know that women of antiquity, which kept going until the, uh, modern times, let's say even in Asia, um, and many, many uh, examples from Asia, you see very interesting things that are popping out of women's hair and all places and means and places and it's obviously a sign of wealth and it's a sign of uh, stability and it's a sign that you don't have to go out into the fields and work. Okay, but what was this Ir Shel Zahav that, that's so interesting um, that's talked about in the literature of, of today's stuff? So being a historian, I want to look for other places. Other than Rome, I want to look somewhere what, where there's Jewish finds and very interesting uh, Jewish finds and representations. There's a famous synagogue in Syria that was destroyed around 230 CE called Dura Europis. And it was in a city there. It was a military outpost. And there were many other people in the village that was walled, but there were synagogues. And there was also Greek temples. There was everything Christians. It was a whole UN in there, but there was also a shoal. And the shoal had in it, unlike other shoals of the entire kind of area, a shoal didn't have mosaics, but it had frescoes on the wall, paintings, wall paintings. And these frescoes actually survived because it's very dry. And, it, and of course, uh, historians... Uh, about a hundred years ago, maybe a little more, found these fantastic walls that fell down and were preserved by the desert heat and eventually uncovered them, brought them out, cleaned them up, found out the beautiful colors and dyes they had on them. And they are now uh, in various museums, not where Jews could see them, but luckily there's lots of pictures taken by the French and British archeologists of the time. Now, if I'm gonna show you a panel here of one of the frescoes on the shoal about Esther and Malka, Esther and Mordechai and Ahasuerus. Esther is sitting here. There, you can see her. She's sitting there and notice what she has on her head. It kind of looks like a basket, but let's call it a tiara. It's something high, it's something protruding. It looks like some kind of item that has been identified by many scholars as the Ir Shel Zahav. And this is exactly the right time, right? 200 and something, 210, 20, 30, exactly the right time when the Mishnah was written. 
And it appears that that's what women wore. And the clothes that she's wearing certainly look patrician enough. You know, very typical of what you think. There's the man, there's all the slaves, there's everybody. And so one of these panels is the story of Purim, because it was such a glorious story. And there's your tiara. And when uh, Shalom Paul, the academic who did find this and who referred this to, in the article that he wrote, that I read recently on the subject, he said that this is the Ir Zahav, and he thinks that's what it looked like. And so it looked like some kind of um, sort of walled city with turrets. And when we think of tiaras, actually, that's what you think of when you look at the old types of crowns. So there is your mystery tiara. And uh, I think we can say that it, it looked like something very odd protruding, but they thought it was beautiful.